All right, here we go. So I started with a statement that today's medium, thank you. And that some of you absolutely positively, I just need to tell you what you're doing, you should be able to handle it. But for most of you, we need to we need to do these problems, right? One at a time. Right? The way you get better at them is a little bit of practice. Okay? All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, there is one change. I'll have this change by tomorrow. So we finalized the schedule. Was what I thought we were going to do. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this Monday, right here, your seventh period class and your eighth period class. Stop class and notes. Okay. Seventh, seventh and eighth period classes will be a semester final. Right? So this is a full day on this Monday. You're going to take your seventh. What do you have? Some period. Uh, Latin. Latin. <laughs> That's when your Latin final is. Monday? That Monday. That's when your Latin final will be. These four days right here are going to be half days. So one semester final on a full day, and the rest are on the half days. So we got two this day, two this day, two this day. I've got the numbers, but I'll have it up there for tomorrow. The last day is simply for makeups. We, we know that there'll be some some of the All four of these are half days. Yes. Half day schedules. So the schedule will be, you come to school, you're immediately going to go to your student advisement for 30 minutes. The 30 minutes is get your stuff together, get ready to take a final. You go to your final class, it's an hour and a half long final, right? When that's over, you go back to student advisor for another 30 minutes to decompress and get ready for the next one. You go to the second one, and then you go home. That, yeah, that's what that 30 minutes is for. I am going to have that. Uh, we just finalized it this morning, so I, I don't have to do it. Yes. Yeah. There are no finals here unless you missed one of these. We're going to have some activities there involving things. I know there's going to be a big assembly because it's the last day for Christmas. So we don't need to go to that? Uh, you do need, this is a required day to come to school. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, I will say, just say this. I will be doing no teaching this day, but I certainly will probably give enough because somebody's going to be absent. So somebody's going to be absent. We'll have to give some finals. Uh, uh, you, we, we, we're, this Friday is when we're going to hammer out what we're going to do. I know that there's just a, there's a big, assembly, big assembly there. All right. Yeah. Well, then all this you're still gonna it's just it's the normal stuff, you know. Being I mean, like uh, on this day there'll be two finals for you. That day two finals for you. That day you'll do your assembly and then you'll stay in your pajamas and Rosie, what? No, no. I was saying we she wasn't here last year, so never mind. Okay. We had done it online last year, like the last the last thing. All right. All right. Here we go. Cut down your homework. There are some ugly, ugly, ugly problems in this homework stuff. There's also some very easy ones. The only cool thing is this. The more of the ugly ones that you do, the, the easier they get. You're just dividing fractions. My, it's like, this thing's pulling so freaking hard on my... Oh, They're God. literally turning through. I know, because it's pulling so hard. Always dividing fractions. Yeah. That is all we're doing. Oh, wow, that's easy. Do no, it, it, so so how did, how did, how did, did I flip. start this class? You thought it was going to be medium hard. This is really easy. I I go my my the every Look at question 23 and 24. Hold on. We're going to we're going to do all the examples. All right, time out. Time out. All right, shut up. So as I stated that neither Ryland or Josie were listening, I said that I really just need to show you the homework and say do it. Right, but there are some complicated ones, and there also is one trick that Rylan or Josie do not know what to do. Is it uh, just cross? No, no, it's a new trick. It's a new trick for everyone. You've never seen this before. If I do, can I get twenty dollars? Uh, you don't have to take Why your semester you final if you can if you can do it. Okay, okay, okay. I don't think I said. You don't know. You don't know the trick. Though. None of you know the trick. How do you know? You you never would have encountered it before. I did chronic. I did. <laughs> 
All right, here we go. But I do need you guys to be quiet and pay attention, which you're not doing right now. All right. So as most of you already realized, we're just just dividing fraction, and somebody said, "Oh, I just copied out." But you're correct. The difference is it's going to involve polynomials, right? So most of you can do this. It's no big deal. If I ask you to divide, this is not what's for homework tonight, by the way. Uh, if I ask you to divide two uh, two fractions, quarter, what do we do? So what do I actually do? Um, right, two thirds back. Okay, that's the copy part. Put the dot. That's the dot part. And then put one fourth. And then do what? Do the what does that mean, though? If you're right, but what does it mean? Do the math. Well, two plus four is six. Three plus one is four. So it's six over four. I just want you to expound on the when you say, well, then you just do the math. What does that mean to do the math? Well, what does the dot mean? So when you say do the math, do the math actually means multiply. And how do you multiply with fractions? Straight across. Secondly, if you can, we like to cross reduce. Can we cross reduce on this one? No. no, so then we just multiply straight across and we get eight thirds. Okay. Uh, by the way, this is not what homework is on because homework is going to be on much more challenging ones. Uh, your teacher probably told you that division is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Big no. fancy words. You had me last year. I said this. No. Right. Big fancy words. You want me to pull up the pre algebra class yes. and show you? Yes, I want to see. Uh, I took this from the pre algebra class. Okay. All right. Um, Division is the same as multiplied by the reciprocal. Okay, reciprocal just means a fraction that has been flipped. Okay, that's where the copied out flip comes from. All right. If this is the rule for division, then it must also work with whole numbers, right? You can't have a special rule just because they're fractions. It must also apply to whole numbers. So watch, copied out flip will also. No, I don't recommend this for anyone. Uh, copied out flip will also work with whole numbers. So Porter said we copy the first one. Well, that's 10, but I'm going to write 10 as 10 over 1. That's a fraction. I change division to multiplication. That's a dot. And I take 2, which is 2 over 1, and I flip it. That makes it 1 over 2. Multiply straight across. What do you get? Well, not <laughs> 5, but you get which is 5. So I'm just pointing out, no, and I don't expect any of you to do this. I just point out that this rule of copy dot flip works for all numbers, not just fractions. Would anybody be dumb enough to do, do this? Well, maybe a couple of you, but uh, uh, no, I'm not recommending for any of you to do this, right? I was making a joke there in case you, you know. All right, you just called me dumb. No, I didn't call you dumb. All right, write this down, please. Box one. Box one, and if you want uh, Yeah, they just throw variables here to, rec to, to represent, it could be any number, positive, negative. So, A divided by B, or A over B divided by C divided by D, is the same as A over B, that's the copy, dot, that's the changing division of multiplication, D over C. So, there's your copy dot flipper, which you learned in seventh grade. And then you did again in eighth grade. Now you're doing it in ninth grade, and you're going to be doing this for, until you, you don't take math anymore. We're always going to be dividing fractions. Copy dot flip. Oh, by the way, Rylan, what's the answer? Uh, that. Oh. What is it? You said this was easy. This is the homework problem. Oh, okay. Well, it takes some time, but it's pretty easy. So for those who are like, well, I already know how to do this. By the way, this is the bottom one. That's what you'll have tonight for homework. Not all of them. Not, yeah, most like, I think one, two, like, I mean, two, but two, ten. This one right here is Rylan Apley correctly said, right, is that, well, it just takes a little bit of time, okay? Uh, we're going to concentrate on this one today because the easy ones are the easy ones, okay? I don't panic. We'll only do one of these, and I will only ever have, like, maybe one of these, like this one. This is as ugly as it gets, by the way. Well, the issue is that when you get to higher level math, this is what you deal with. And you guys are in higher level math. Yeah. Higher level math doesn't involve like two thirds, right? Yeah. Have you ever used that problem in 
absolutely. When you get, if you gener, if you move on to calculus, this is a very common occurrence. Okay, calculus is what real math people, engineers. Do. I mean, engineers when they build things and whatnot. You, you guys don't know this yet, but calculus is where it's at. I mean, all this stuff builds up to calculus. If you want to do that sort of thing, if you want to figure out changing rates and whatnot. And you use, I mean, like for instance. When they built this bottle right here, when they're trying to model this, they set up a math equation that represents this. When they actually actually had to build this, right? It's calculus, right? So they have to calculate the volume of it. They have to make machines that make this. It's all done with calculus. And the issue with and why that you get to learn all this cool math, which okay, arguably cool, is that in order to do calculus, you got to be able to do all this easy stuff right here. All right, so we're do the basic one first. Uh, both of these, there's a couple of these tonight for homework. Okay, that's that's not even algebra one. That's you know seventh and eighth grade math right there. All right, let's do it. Go ahead. Box two. Copy dot flip. You take the first fraction. You copy. Oh, by the way, the mistakes that I will see generally in this class, somebody here, please listen carefully. I'm going to say somebody will cross reduce first step. You cannot cross reduce until after copy dot flip. So don't do any cross reduction until you do copy dot flip. So we do a copy dot flip. We copy the first fraction, put a dot. Once you've done copy dot flip, Aiden, your pencil's not moving. Once you've done copy dot flip, now you can do some cross reduction. Let's say I got a five, a 10, and a six, and a three. So uh, five goes into five once, five goes into 10 two times, uh, three goes into six and nine. Three goes into six twice, three goes nine. Notice I'm doing it in PowerPoint, it's nice and neat. In fact, I'm even changing colors. So it's easy for me to see when I do the multiplication. The second mistake is just people that are very sloppy when they start doing this cross reduction. Check out this problem has nothing but crosses in it. So the issue is you got, you know, uh, your, your pencil lead. So sometimes all this crossing kind of gets confusing and messy and you can't read what you wrote. Uh, Tristan said immediately that it's uh, 60 over, over uh, uh, 45, which is if you multiply straight across, then you reduce. So for some of you, maybe you don't want to do cross reduction if you're really messy, right? 60 over 54 at I'm least, messy. or sorry, 45. 60 over 45, at least you can get to the partial answer. Uh, let's see, 2 times 2 is 4, 1 times 3 is 5, so we get uh, 4. What? Did I? Yes. Where did I get a 5 from? 2 times 2 is 4, 1 times 3 is 3. Okay. Uh, by the way, there might be one of these tonight for homework, but they, they generally start off with you got some variables involved. Once again, don't do any cross reduction until you do copy dot flip. So in the second one, we do a copy dot flip, and then we reduce. Hey, life is nice. The A's cancel. Hey, the threes go away. Three goes to three once. Three goes to six twice. Multiply straight across. Oh, this is the uh, third mistake. Guess what some students will write the answer as? They'll write two, when in fact it's really one over two. Rowan, did you read my script or something today? Very good. All right, who's lost? Okay, you shouldn't be because this is the easy stuff. All right. So you just cross reduce, you just cover up both of the reduce. Then cross reduce, but the issue is going to be this step number two, which says factor. None of these could be factored. But the more challenging ones are the ones that are going to be able to factor. Today we will do a, a bunch of them. All right, here is more likely this is where algebra one starts, where you got polynomials, both the denominator, the numerator, and the denominator. We aren't going to forget our rules of cross reduction. Cross reduction only starts after you do copy dot flip. Aiden, pencil, start writing. Okay, box three. Aiden, tell me exactly what to write. Go, first step. So tell me what to write. Okay. And then y dot over x to the second. Okay, with the exception of saying the word dot, you got that right. Okay. 
Don't do any cross reduction until you do copy dot flip. We done copy dot flip. I don't know how you guys want to think about it. This is the way that I think about it. I just think about how many X's I got on the top, how many X's I got on the bottom, and how many canceled. I got one X on the top, I got two X's on the bottom. When they canceled, how many would I be left with? One. On the top or bottom? Bottom. That works for me. If that doesn't win, but if I cause more confusion by that, you gotta tell me. There's other explanations. Uh, the hardest explanation is the using the exponent rule. So this is x to the first, that's x, so it's x to the one minus two, which is negative one, so it goes to the bottom, becomes positive one. I find that confusing. Okay. All right, we got one y on the top, we got two y's on the bottom, and they cancel, we'd be left with? Y, one more y on the y. Say it. One on the bottom. One on the bottom. I'm so smart. All right, so here's the deal. After this is all done, what were you left with on the top? Y and then you just told me we we're left with one y on the bottom. Yes. So what are we left with on the top? One. Nothing in this case. Then you're always left with one. So it's one over x one. Okay. You said today was gonna be so hard. I'm getting to that last one. Yeah. Go ahead. Say it. Can you write an example now? Yeah. Okay, tell me what to write. So, okay. Eight. Okay. Just plain old 40. 4D. 4D, okay. Over B. Okay. I'm going to do a copy dot flip first. So D over 8B dot, I'm going to flip that sucker. B goes on the top and 4D goes on the bottom. I got a B and a B, they cancel. I got a D and a D, they cancel. Nothing. Well, they got the 8 times 4. So on the top, what are you left with? Oh, no. what, yeah, it's always 1. And on the bottom, it's 8 times 4, which is 32. So you 1 over 32? I thought you were good. Okay. I thought what you were saying is what happens if the second one is a whole number. Like, this is a good one. So this one will be listed. So just remember, before it's, before it's division, remember that it's over 1, and you would flip it. Okay. So, Remember, no cross reduction until you do a copy dot flip. All right, second one. Yeah, let's see. All right, talk me through. Second one. Talk me through copy dot flip. Mm -hmm. okay. This just gets messy, right? Of what cancels, just be careful. Notice I have a well three, and there's a four. That nothing cancels there. So I got an eighteen and a four though. What can I pull out of that? Two, right? So that four becomes a two, and then 18 becomes a? No, it's a two. Okay. Becomes a nine. Two and a nine. We okay? Like I said, I do it in color, so it's nice and pretty. If I'm doing this in real life, boy, am I trying to have the most ni neatest handwriting in my life. Because it just gets really sloppy. Uh, we got two X's on the bottom. We got one X on the Oh, two X's on the, on the top, one on the bottom. One X on the top. On the top. So for me, a lot of times I'll immediately put equals big long fraction mark. You said one X on the top, so I'll put the X on the top. The X's are done. Well, I got two Y's on the bottom, those don't cancel. Y times Y is Y times Y is on the bottom. And then we got a two times nothing. So we got a two on the bottom and on the top. Don't forget this three. Three times nine. Ugh. It's ugly, right? If I do it nice and pretty, it looks like that. But boy, it just gets really messy with the cancellation. It doesn't look messy because I did it in PowerPoint. But I'm saying when you do it in real life, it gets messy. Yeah. Would there be anywhere? Yeah. Where something is different. Uh, like I said yesterday, I don't know if you heard me, which was our book makes this big deal about uh, excluded numbers, and then it forgets it. 
literally, we won't even look, we won't even see it again. Even though clearly there's got to be some excluded numbers here because we got denominators. The book chooses to introduce that concept one section and then says, okay, forget about that. Let's go on. There's definitely some excluded values here, right? Uh, y can't be zero. Uh, but other than that, that's the excluded value. All right, box four, here we go. This is what I thought that uh, Julie was asking the question, one that looked like this. So okay. it's, you just put a one over it, right? And then you flip it. It's, so we put a one over it, we flip it, and we do some canceling. Yeah. To start with, you can, sure. But then when you do the copy.flip, that's when the one goes to the top. Okay. Uh, the X is what cancel out. One Y on the top. Uh, one Y on the top and nothing else, right? So one Y on the top and three on the bottom. Is that it? It would be. Yeah. It's not bad at all. For some reason, they're going to combine multiple things here. Notice what they've combined. They combined a power to a power. So they're asking you to do a power of power first, because powers come before division. So you got to do the power of power first. Yup. Three to the second power is x to the second power is x squared, and five to the second power is. So they're asking you to do that first before you do the copy dot flip, and then once again. Notice I'm copied to one, but we would like that to be a fraction. So one over one. So one over one times that. Okay. Well, the nice thing is that one times anything is yeah. itself. So well, what times one is like yeah. Okay. Anything anything. Is the anything. I got I got one. Yeah. yeah. So therefore, there's really nothing to do on that one. I went pretty fast on that one. Are we okay? okay. <laughs> The biggest mistake I see is you'll do some cross canceling before you do copy dot flip. Yeah. Yeah, we're coming to them. Those are the ugliest of the uglies. No, the other one, the next thing you're about to do. All right, here we go. So she said, let's factor, let's factor. All right, here we go. So we haven't done any factoring yet. Generally speaking, this is what the factoring is going to look like. The, the issue is that sometimes you won't even realize you got something you can factor. Mm -hmm. All right, Rylan, you said you were you were on it. What's the factor to? What's it? What? Why circle? What is it factor to? Oh, it's factor to. That's one of those special case ones. Oh my gosh. Notice there's no middle term. Oh wait, do you want me like you should be able to do this in your head? I forgot all of this. I'm really bad at that. Yeah. Did you notice it doesn't have that middle? Is there, it usually goes x squared plus three x minus one, something like yes, that. But notice there's that? no middle term here. There's no b value. So is it x plus one x minus one? That's what you gotta oh, remember. That's what you meant. Remember? The ones that have no middle terms, if the second number is a perfect square, which it is one, usually it'll be like x squared, uh, it'll always be minus. Uh, x squared minus nine, x squared minus four, x squared minus 16, x squared minus 25. If it's x squared plus one, it doesn't factor that one. Uh, Josie said this factored into what? x plus one, x minus one. Okay. We do a copy dot flip first, because we're supposed to. She said this factored into x plus one, x minus one. Now look what happens. Stop me if you didn't get that step that right there. That looks even more complicated than it is. That would be it's just longer, right? It's the same stuff. We still got multiplication. What cancels? Two and 16. Okay, so the two and the 16. X plus one, X plus one. Look, we got an x plus one and x plus one. Well, the reason why we're able to cancel it because there's multiplication. So we can cancel out. And x plus one. Stop me if you didn't get that. Yes. This factors into x plus one, x minus one. If you multiply x plus one times x minus one, that gives me a negative one. That gives me a negative x. That gives me a positive x. And that gives me an x squared. That turns into these cancel x squared minus 1. So 
I'll just say tonight for homework, you're only going to see two types of things that can be factorable. You're going to see one of these special case ones. You should be looking for them all time. And you'll see the normal ones like uh, we'll see here in example two. Uh, by the way, we said the 2 and the 16, the 2 would go away, the 16 would turn into an 8. So what's the final answer? X minus 1, wait, what? Yeah, all right. X minus 1 times 8. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's it? That's it. Now, you have a choice of writing the answer like this or or the distributive property. I would accept either answer. I'm more likely, let's leave it as this, because now it's in fully factored form. Let's, let's, let's finish class. Let's finish class. All right. I said there was going to be a math trick. So now you really got to, you've never seen this before in your entire life. There's these things called, they're not called math tricks. I call them math tricks. There's these things in math is uh, that someone comes up with that they notice, hey, if I only did this, I could be able to do this whole bunch of other stuff. I don't know who came, this doesn't, you should have a name to it, whoever first came up with it, it doesn't have a name. So I gave it a name a long time ago, I just called it a math trick. This is your number one standard math trick in algebra. You just never seen it before because it doesn't come up until today. Today's the first time you'd ever have a need for this math trick. So welcome to the math trick club. Here we go, this is the math trick, okay? Is this the same on the top or the same on the bottom? Yes. No, actually, kind of, but it's just the negative. I'm going to go with his answer. It's like it's kind of the same. Notice this two is, uh, but this two is negative. So can we cancel this? Yes. yes. No. Can you ever cancel two over negative two? You can't cancel that, right? It's not the same. The time we're allowed to cancel is when you have a three over exactly the same. Now we can cancel that. So the issue is we would like to cancel it. In fact, it looks almost the same. This is a math trick. This is a very common math trick. Like from now on, you'll see uh, geometry. No, I don't think I've ever seen it in geometry. But in algebra, algebra 2, pre-calculus, calculus, use this all the time. So when you have something that you would like to, I would love to cancel these. But I'm not allowed to because it's not the same thing over itself. We use a math trick. This is a pretty slick math trick. What would happen if I multiplied that original fraction by one? I would get the same thing. Nothing is what I was looking for. Nothing would happen, right? Here comes the math trick. You're allowed to multiply anything as long as it's by itself, right? Or the same thing, top and bottom. I'm just going to choose instead of, of, of that, right, to do that. So why do you make them You're going to see here in a second. Do you agree that it's the same thing? Yeah. So I'm really just multiplying by one. Right? So if I multiply this by one, technically nothing should happen. All right? Well, let's see what happens if we multiply by negative one. That turns into that turns into uh, that turns into and that turns into and we're still stuck with the same problem. Not a very good math trick. I did a little bit of work and nothing. I've still got the same opposite things. Here's the actual math trick. Okay. The actual math trick is, yeah, we're going to multiply top and bottom by negative one, but one, we're just going to leave the negative one on the outside. Doesn't matter which one, top or bottom. I'm going to choose to multiply one of these by negative one, and the other one, I'm going to leave the negative one on the outside. Watch what I do. I chose to multiply the, there's no, no specific reason why I chose the bottom. I chose to multiply the bottom by negative one and the top to leave it that way. What's that number? What's this number right here? What's that number? What's that number? What's that number? I can cancel now. That's the trick. Exactly. Nothing happens to negative one. So that cancels, that cancels, and guess what the answer is? This is a math trick. So the math trick is this. When you're doing some algebra and you're trying to reduce a fraction and you notice, hey, look, in parentheses, I got the same thing almost. They're just opposite of each other. The math trick is this. You multiply the top and the bottom by negative one, but you only do it to one of the, the, the denominator or the numerator, either one. doesn't matter. I chose to do it to the denominator, not the numerator. The other one, you leave the negative one just hanging there. It's still there. I could distribute it. I choose not to. 
because it wouldn't do anything. Because what it would do is not allow me to cancel. Okay? But if I leave it like this, since it's multiplication, I can cancel and you're left with negative one. That's your first math trick. All right, so let's see that again. If you have almost the same thing over itself, just the signs are opposite, you multiply by negative one. One you multiply by, the other one you leave it alone, and then you're able to cancel. Will the answer always be negative one? Yep. So how would that look like in a real problem? So here's a real problem. I got this divided by that. I do a copy dot flip. Uh, there's nothing to factor. And what I notice is this, when I multiply straight across, I get the, the same but opposite. So I choose to use the, otherwise this would be your stopping point if you didn't use this math trick. But if I use the math trick, I can make this, well, that's an ugly looking answer right there. Negative one is, well, I guess some would say it's prettier answer. So I'm going to choose to multiply top and bottom by negative one. One of them you mess with, one of them you don't. Okay? And then look, we've got the same thing on the top, same thing on the bottom, a positive y and a negative x, they cancel. And yes, the answer will always be negative one. It's called the negative one trick. There, I just gave it a formal name. Wow. Uh, you will see this tonight for homework. All right. That's enough. That's enough, guys. That's enough. Oh, my God. That's special. Shut up. all the people that live there. Yeah. So, this is as ugly monster one that I can make. I don't want to see it. All right. It, this is the one I showed you at the very start. Uh, I don't know how many of these I gave you tonight. Listen, please. I don't know how many I gave you tonight for homework, but there's not many of them. It's a couple. Two? That's what a couple of them. All right. Uh, all it means is that you got a whole bunch of step number two, which is factor. All right, everybody grab your pencils. You got to do one of these. You got to do one of these. Here we go. Step number one is always do copy dot flip. They this is the, right. This is the same thing. Copy dot flip. I didn't say we're doing a different one. So do a copy dot. It's going to take a while. You got to write it all out. So do a copy dot flip. So I got W squared minus four over W squared minus one dot, take that sucker and flip it. Uh, Tristan was trying to say it's literally the same, it's not. I got a negative here and I got a positive here. Oh, okay, I thought I, okay. I don't know why I said that. And you're gonna see, we're gonna fill this whole page up full of numbers and it can get kind of confusing. So some of you may, because it's hard to visually see what's going on, you may want to put like a dotted line that separates the two. I don't know. If you visually run into a problem, like I can't see the problem, or skip a line. You get in algebra two, this is a big issue. In pre-calculus is a big issue is because you're, it takes a you know, page to do one problem and you can't, wait, where's the fraction bar? You skip, you, it causes you problems. All right. Landon, does it factor? Yeah. What's it factor to? W. What's four? Nope. Yeah, w Those special plus case ones. W plus four. W minus. Not four. W plus W. W plus two. Yeah. W minus two. What's the bottom one factor two? W one. W. W plus one. W minus one. Okay. So there's your first one. This fraction right here, w squared minus 4 over w squared minus 1, factors to w plus 2, w minus 2. Now remember, that includes parentheses. And the bottom turns into w minus 1, or w plus 1, w minus 1, however you want to write it. Ugh. That's only half, that's only one fraction. Okay, now we get to a more friendlier one, right? Kylie yesterday showed me, like, she could factor these, like, no tomorrow. So, okay. negative two, give me the factors. That add up the positive one. So, W plus two, W minus one. On the bottom, it's still a negative two, but it's got to add up to negative one. 
So that would just be a flip flop. So that would be W minus two, W plus one. All right, all that stated, I gotta put a dotted line here because it's hard to see. This is everything, it's ugly, right? That's what Landon told us eventually. Yeah. Uh, this is what Josie said. And this is what, what did I say? You didn't say anything. Uh, this, is, this is what Hannah uh, said. And then I said this was the opposite. Now you got to stop me if you didn't get that. Wait, what? I did not get that. You, you're the one that told me this. You said, I said, what are the factors of negative two? And you said two and one. And I said that add to positive one. And you said, eventually, uh, you said uh, uh, positive two and a negative. Well, actually, Hannah said that one. She said positive two, negative one. And then when we looked at the bottom, and I said, what adds up to the negative one? And then we said it flip flop. So it's minus two plus one. I mean, when you look at the board right now, all you see is just a lot of W's. And if you need glasses and you don't have glasses, then you just see a whole bunch of mess. <laughs> Agree. And that's why I had Godzilla there, because this looks super, super, super messy. Thank you, Andrew. Well, we'll get there in a second. Is everyone up caught up? Agree. Okay, so you, you don't panic, just one step at a time. So now we look at what we can cancel. For me, I just, for these ugly ones, I go from left to right. What's the very first thing, Aiden, you see on the top? Uh, uh, the, the, the whole thing. <laughs> so, okay, do you see any <laughs> W plus twos on the top? Now stay with me. Where? No, okay. What's the next thing? So that they don't care. So what's the next thing you see? Do you see any W minus two on the bottom? Yes. Yeah, W minus two. So one off the top, one off the bottom. So I'm going to cancel that one, yeah. and I'm going to cancel that one. Okay. Uh, what do we got next? We already said there were none on the bottom. What do you see there? You see any W minus ones on the bottom? So one off the top, one off the bottom. What you don't have written or crossed off is the answer. So it's W squared. Not W squared. Cubed. Just read what it says. W. <laughs> read what it says. W plus two. Keep reading. W plus two. And then on the bottom? W plus one and W plus one. Oh, so let, me, let me distribute it. Now comes the should we multiply or not multiply. It's the you know sixty four thousand dollars question. Uh, if you want to do that, then you got to multiply. Oh, last chapter's test. You got to multiply that times that and that times that. Okay. If you want to leave it like that, you can. Uh, yeah. So that's the answer. That's the answer. And, it, and we did all those steps just to give that. Right. Yeah. That's the that's the best statement right there. Is that unfortunately for you, uh, wait till you get to geometry next year, where you do a thing called a proof, and it takes you a whole page to get to one answer. But yeah, I mean the days of the days of easy math are kind of they're past. This, right? I mean, it's easy math. Is oh no, I yeah, that's the right statement. It, if you get to understand the process, you're not going to say, well, it's 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 hard, but it ears. certainly fills up the entire paper full of stuff. Give your ears a break. Just hold it to your I, I've been doing that, yeah. But then it looks weird when I try to talk. All right. Okay. So, uh, Landon said that there were only uh, two of these. Two of these? Your ears got to feel hot. No, they feel like they're being cut right now. Oh. They're shriveled. All right. Uh, I don't know if you do. You, have you ever seen wrestlers before? They have these things called ca cauliflower. Have you ever seen that? The first time you see, you understand why they're called cauliflower ears. So this is why wrestlers wear that thing with the ear cups. So that the problem is when you you wrestle someone, you get them in a the headlock, it crunches their ears up. And what it causes, I don't know, I'm making this part up, I guess, causes inflammation and, you know, damage to your ears, and they puff out. And then they look like 
They don't actually look like cars. I want to see a picture. Uh, you know, it's disgusting. I want to see it. They they actually do an operation to help. All right. Hey, we could spend the rest of the four minutes left of doing more of these. No. But probably our time better spent would be for you to open up your books right now and try to do a couple of these all by yourself. Uh, all right, so let's do that. I don't have any tape, I don't. I keep telling myself I need to get tape. All right, Chris, are you online right now? Yeah. Questions, Chris? I don't know where to start. Okay. Uh, if you need any specific help, make sure you send me some message right in chat and ask a question about the homework. Try your homework. I would, uh, I'll have this recording up by say four o'clock this afternoon. Uh, try your homework. If, uh, if you run into any problems, play the video, at least the important parts again, that look like the one that you're trying to do for homework. And if that doesn't work, send me a message. Okay. All right. I'm gonna stop it right there. You guys have a wonderful day.